Welcome to Manga Storian's Complete Story Series. It's time for the Elf and Children arc here on Berserk to come to an ending so we can continue moving forward. Now in our last video, Guts made his way into the Misty Valley to find Jill and Rosine. But as Rosine starts to turn Jill into one of the other elves, Guts set fire to Rosine's cocoons. As the fire raged through the nest, Rosine called out to her elves to finally kill Guts once and for all. While Guts does battle with her, outside of the Misty Valley, Farnis and her knight make their way through the forest. As they do, they find the remains of the battle that took place not long ago with guts and a horde of insects. Seeing the death and destruction brought about by the Black Swordsman, Farnese says that she must capture this man for the sake of their faith. He must be stopped! Back inside of the nest, Guts continues slaughtering the insects, smashing and crushing them with the flat side of his sword. Jill watches as the fires burn around Guts, and the bodies of the children begin to scream in pain. Rosine shouts, How dare he? But it matters not. There are plenty more of her army left, and he will be made to suffer forever. With a wave of Rosine's arm, the surrounding insects all begin to swarm around Guts, biting and tearing away at his flesh. Rosine tells him it's been fun, but so long. And Guts stands there, bitten as he grins, showing his teeth. And he charges forward, straight into the flames. Razin calls out to him, asking him what does he think he's doing. And then she notices he's standing in the flames as they burn away the insects. And with one powerful upwards thrust, he stabs into the cocoon. With the rest of the insects incarcerated, the blood begins to pour out of the cocoon, covering guts and the blood and entrails of those around him. He then stands as the fluids rain over his body, and Rosine shouts, asking if he's even human. Just what the hell is he? With the nest burning all around her, Rosine weaves through the embers and flies straight towards Guts. And once she gets within range, he unravels her antenna to try and stab her. But the antenna is just deflected by the base of Guts' sword. Rosine flies back up trying to figure out how to attack. But before he can even think of a plan, Guts appears behind her. With one massive swing, Guts tears down the branches that she's standing on, and narrowly she jumps away. As she flies off, Guts chases after her, and soon stops when he feels the brand at his neck beginning to bleed. He stares down at the pathway of fire, and he begins to see Rosine coming out, but bigger and transformed. She tells him that he had killed her elves, destroyed her fairyland, but she doesn't need them. Not when she has these wings! The only thing that she needs is Jill, and she will never forgive him for what he's done. Using her giant body, Rosine flies through the burning trees, knocking everything over, aiming her antenna straight for Guts. As the antenna gets close, Guts holds out the broad side of his sword, hitting the antenna upwards, deflecting the attack. The force from it blows everything away and knocks Guts back down to the ground. Once Razine gets back into the air, she laughs, saying how she's not sure how he dodged that, but she'll just have to do it again! With each attack, Guts notices something. Her speed is decreasing, and with the next flyby, he gets up and he doesn't dodge. Instead, he braces for the hit. She laughs, shouting that she's just gonna skewer his arms and his head! As the antenna reaches, it pierces through Guts' arm, and Razine lifts him off the ground and into the air. With Guts' body swinging around, she says that it looks like she missed again, but with wounds like that, he won't be lasting much along with that much blood loss. She shoots straight up into the sky, telling Guts that he can't pass out yet. They have such a beautiful moon to see. Razine readies herself and says that she can see why Jill takes a liking to him. Not many strong guys like him around, but Jill is hers, and hers alone! So all that's left is to fly as fast as she can until his body is ripped apart by the wind! But before flying off, she kisses the inside of her cocoon and sees Guts' hand. He looks back at her and he holds his mechanical arm towards her chest. And then he drops the hand. The cannon blasts, shooting into the body of the insects, blowing a hole in her back. From the ground, Jill watches as both Guts and Razine fall from the sky. The two bodies begin to fall through the tree branches and Guts sees his sword off in the distance. But before he can crawl over to it, Razine picks her own body up, screaming, Where? Where is he? As he makes his way to his sword, he realizes that he has to tie it in place because of his broken hand. But all he needs is one shot. This time, he can kill her. However, across the ways, Jill calls out to Guts, and soon the fire starts to surround her. She begins to cry, saying how stupid she is, and that's when a tree branch snaps. Puck screams at her to run! And just before the branch can land on her, Razine catches it. She tells Jill not to worry. She'll be safe in her arms. They can leave together. And then from behind them, Guts watches and waits. As Razine starts to fly up, Guts jumps from the burning brush and he thrusts his sword into her back. The blade of the sword shoots through her womb and grazes just past Jill's head before she's suddenly released. As Jill begins to fall, she feels something dripping onto her. And then the deformed child's body falls into her arms. Puck flies up, telling her that they need to hurry and get out of here, but through her scream, she begins to smile and laughs. Up in the air, Razine frantically flies, trying to shake guts off of her, and she shouts that humans are not supposed to harm elves! But as she does, her antennas whisper back, 
finally loosening the sword from her body. With Gut's body falling backwards to the ground, Razine flies back around shouting that she will not allow him to snatch away the lives of elves! She will not allow it to happen! As the antenna strains back out, she screams that she will destroy him! Guts watches as the antenna gets closer, and then it stabs into him. Razine starts laughing that she finally stabbed Guts in the head, but he positioned his head in such a way that the antenna stabbed through his cheek, and he bit down on it. Rage begins to take over Guts, and with a devastating swing, he swings down onto her body. The blade rips and tears down into the side of her body, and then he falls down to the ground. As she also falls, she remembers back to how she came this way. One night after finding the Mahilat, she sat in the woods waiting to finally see the elves, but as she sat and waited, her parents found her. Her mother was relieved to find her, but her father beat her. Her mother tried to stop him, but then he began hitting her as well. It was at that moment as the blood dripped from her lips and onto the egg that she wished for it all to stop. She wished for it all to go away. But now, none of that matters. Jill runs over to Razine, but before Jill can say anything, Razine tells her that there was never really any elves. Jill tries to tell her to hang on, but Puck tells her that that's not true. Razine looks up at him, and he tells her that there really was an elf village here long ago. Though they are not here now, he can feel that there was once one here. Jill holds Puck out in her hand and tells Razine, look, there are elves. This is a real one. Razine holds her hand out to touch him and says, they really do exist. But off in the water, bubbles begin to surface as Guts jumps from the the lake. Razine says it's alright, she'll be okay even after all of this. However, over at the lake, Gut shuffles himself out, dragging his sword behind him. Jill tells him to stop, he's hurt her enough, please leave her alone. Guts brushes her off and she grabs onto his back, asking, why do you hate her so much? Why? Guts knocks her off his arm and then he raises the sword over Razine's body. As the chilling wind of the night blows by, Guts yells as the sword cuts down through towards Razine's broken body. Jill screams for him to stop and she throws herself over Razine, and in a moment of hesitation, Guts stops and then a bolt flies through, landing at his side. Everyone stops and looks around, and across the field, Jill's father laughs that he did it. He hit the black swordsman. He calls out for everyone to hurry up and just hit him. And then over the hill, Farnese and her knights charge in as she yells that they will not let him get away. More bolts are fired, hitting and bouncing off a of gut's armor, and he quickly turns to run. While everyone gets ready to chase after him, Jill's father gets back up, telling everyone to wait for him. Zapik steps up to him, telling him no. He only fired the arrow to protect his daughter. Now it's up to them to stop the black swordsman. He then waves as him and the rest of the knights run up ahead. Jill's father throws his crossbow down, shouting, Damn it all! But while everyone left, Razine stands back up, telling Jill that it's time for her to go home. Her wings begin to flutter open as she flies into the night sky. As she goes on, she tells herself that she's almost home. Better hurry home so that her parents won't be worried about her. And just as she thinks about what she's going to eat when she gets home, she falls from the sky back towards the earth. Jill watches as Razine flew off, but as the tears fell from her face, she wonders if she should follow her or not. Over with Jill's father, he gets up stating that he should have known that it was going to end like this. Oh well, let's go Jill. She doesn't move and she tells him no, she can't just leave yet. Jill's father asks what she's talking about and begins to swing his cane at her, telling her that he's going to leave her here then. She tells him it's fine, he can go on ahead, she has something that she needs to do. Meanwhile, over in the woods, Farnese tells everyone to search everywhere, leave no stone unturned until they find that black swordsman. Over in a small cave, Guts bites down on the hilt of his sword and then he pulls the arrows out of his shoulder. However, as the bolt lands in the water, he hears something coming, and around the corner, Jill and Puck appear. Guts stares at him. She tells him that she wants to come with him, and Guts tells her that she should be lucky that she's even alive. Everywhere he goes, the same sort of thing will happen until they finally kill him. Jill shouts that she doesn't care. He saved her back there, so please let her follow. She won't be in the way. She runs up to hug Guts, telling him that it doesn't matter. Take her anywhere but here. Guts stops and tells her to look carefully. Strain your eyes in the dark and tell me what you see. All around Guts are the heads of spirits, all lunging to try and bite at him. He tells her that she claims to want to go anywhere but here, but if she follows, this is what she will find. This will be her Eden. The spirits begin to crawl all over Jill, whispering that they will have her. Inside Jill's mind, she screams no, and through the ground, Guts drags his sword, brushing away the spirits. As Jill falls to her knees, crying, Guts covers her with his cloak, telling her to run away from this. If she was to follow, the entire world would be a battlefield. He then gets back up and he walks off, and she shouts that what if she doesn't want to go home? It's all the same there. No one is kind. As the spirits swarm around, Guts tells her, go home. This is not your fight. And with that, Jill watched as the black swordman disappeared. The mist that was covering the valley had vanished, and now the sun shines like never before. As the winds blow through Jill's hair, Puck tells her that this is so long then, and he asks if she'll be okay. She says that she may not be violent like the black swordsman, or have the courage to run away like Razine, but maybe if she cries and shouts and bites enough, it'll change something. 
Puck smiles and gives her his magical palm, saying to use it on her old man as much as she wants. And here's some elf dust. As he flies off, Jill asks, why is it that he stays with the Black Swordsman? Puck thinks about it and shrugs, stating, damned if I know. And that concludes the Elf and Children storyline. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll be coming back next week with another story of the Black Swordsman in Berserk. Follow us on Twitter at MangaStory, and don't forget to subscribe for your weekly dose of Berserk.